security chance, yeah. and then you can... Good afternoon, ma'am and class. Throughout my life, I've never willingly searched for poetry. However, I often find myself knee-deep in it, when life starts to move a little too fast, or when there's something I can't quite describe as within my own words. To be able to put your own thoughts into your own words can often be difficult, as the fear of misunderstanding can stop you from talking about how you really feel. This is where the beauty of poetry truly shines through. It allows for someone else's words to describe how you are feeling in a way you could never think of. Poetry can be defined as a literary work in which expression of feelings and ideas is given intensity by the use of distinctive style and rhythm. This means that poetry is not just in our English books, but is everywhere, in our music, even in our speech. The songs that seem to sum up how you're feeling just perfectly, or the chorus that keeps you going through the day, are all defined as poetry. Poetry that is stuck out in the form of music, um, in the form of music, comes from the band Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd was a psychedelic rock band that came out of the, came out of the UK in the 60s. Despite the copious amounts of psychedelics and drugs they constantly consumed, they released many hits that questioned the world around them. Number four out of their top ten hits, Another Brick in the Wall, part two, is an example of this. The song speaks of how events such as school create a sense of isolation, nature and life, and often cause us to turn away from the people we love. Now, I did not think this is what the song meant. I thought that the true meaning of the song was to rage against the machine and call out schools for creating mindless kids who can't think on their own. That in itself highlights the beauty of poetry. It's all about how you interpret it. One of Pink Floyd's lyrics that really has resonated with me recently is from the song Brain Damage. This lyric comes out of the song's chorus. The lyric goes, there is someone in my head, but it's not me. This lyric resonates with me as I often find myself working through tasks mindlessly as if someone else is doing them. The lack of knowledge about this feeling, the lack of understanding, has caused me great anxiety as I've never been truly, been able to, truly been able to word it. However, after sitting down and listening to some of Pink Floyd's discography, just out of curiosity, this feeling now had a true understanding. Much like our, much like our poetry gives an understanding to the world around us, this lyric gave me a realisation that poetry is a search for syllables to shoot at the barriers of the unknown and the unknowable. Something that has always fascinated me is the idea of fate. I've spent hours contemplating whether or not it is true. Many people say that the idea of fate is true and that everything is predestined, pre which in turn means that you can't really change anything and that it is already set in stone. This idea that everything is predetermined and permanent brings a great deal of anxiety within me. This is because if life isn't going, on, going your way, based on the theory of fate, you can't really do much except wait it out. The poem Chance, Destiny, Fate, Future by Casey O'Sheridan helped me rid of myself of this anxiety. The poem takes a strong stance against the idea of fate and makes it evident through its constant use of personal pronouns. Throughout the entire poem, the reader is told that the future is theirs to mould and that it will never truly be set in stone. This reassurance was much needed. Throughout this year, I've often felt that I'm never in control. However, by hearing these words of reassurance, I realised I've always been in control. We make, the, we make choices, and we shouldn't let anyone or anything make them for us. Chance, destiny, and fate future is evidence that poetry is the phantom script telling us how rainbows are made and how and why they go away. On the topic of working towards your future, the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley came to mind. Invictus has been an inspirational poem for many. Invictus speaks... Invictus speaks of a character who faces many challenges. However their, head may, however, their head may be bloody, but it is never unbowed. The striking words at the end of each stanza gives a sense of drive and the need to conquer the world. I too felt, I too felt this way, that I should conquer the world after reading this poem for the first time. It was put in my letter from my parents when we were all on our grade nine journey. My dad felt it was perfect for the situation and there was bound to be hardship, such as, hardship, such as unrelenting rain or high tempers after hours of hiking. The last two lines have kept me motivated throughout the whole experience and still keep me motivated to this day. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. 
These are the words that are engraved in my head. These are the words that help me reflect on my own success. Much like the way poetry is a journal of the sea animal living on the land, wanting to fly in the air. In the end, poetry is what you make of it. Thank you.